Hey, Martin, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Good to see you. Say, you got a minute? I was meaning to give you a call. Sure. Well, last year we heard you were having some complaints from the neighbors about odors coming from your place, but that you did something to solve the problem. Well, now we're getting some complaints about odors at our place, and I was wondering what you did to fix it. Well, yeah, yeah, we were wondering if people were complaining because, you know, we're a pretty uh, large livestock operation, and we were uh, thinking they were jealous of our success. But I, I did go uh, drive around the farm a couple of times for a few months, and uh, I wrote down on the calendar whenever we'd uh, 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 notice some emissions like, uh, you know, either dust or odors, and I did find that there were some odors near the neighbors. So also, whenever ever anybody would be uh, coming by the farm, you know, I'd ask them if they could smell anything, and they said they could, so I kind of had to accept that we did have an odor emission problem. Well. We're having the same issues now, but we don't know how big a deal it is. We decided that good neighbor relations were important to us, as well as our reputation in the community, so we knew we needed to find a way to control our odor emissions and community impacts. So what'd you do? Well, I went to the neighbors to get an understanding of their point of view, and I let them know that we were going to be uh, doing anything that we could to try to control our odor emissions. Uh, and you know the walkers uh, down here to the east of yeah. us, you know, they really appreciated that we were uh, uh, thinking about their concerns. Great. So where'd you get the information to get started? Uh, fortunately, I went to the uh, Livestock and uh, Poultry uh, Education Center website. They have a lot of good information on there. And we continue to, to try to control our odor emissions as part of our business practices. So if you're the owner or manager of an animal feeding operation, what can you do if neighbors complain about odors? Or if you live near a livestock or poultry operation, what do you need to know about odors that come onto your property? These are some of the questions that this video will help address. There are no simple solutions that we can provide in a short video, so we'll point you to additional useful information. My name is Kevin Yanni. I'm a professor and extension engineer at the University of Minnesota. The purpose of this video is to provide and introduce you to useful science-based information about airborne emissions from animal feeding operations. There are several effective practices that reduce odor emissions and numerous things to consider when deciding whether to use one of the practices. Finally, we'll introduce you to two websites where you can find additional information about airborne emissions from animal feeding operations. Odors from livestock and poultry operations are a mixture of numerous gases. Some gases, like phenyl, are very unpleasant and detectable at very low concentrations. Other gases, like methane, are not odorous at all. We know that odors evoke both emotional and physiological responses. The perfume and cosmetics industries work extremely hard to create scents that evoke positive responses. Unfortunately, livestock and poultry odors are usually considered unpleasant or offensive. Sometimes people are concerned about the health effects of odors from livestock and poultry operations. So we talked with Dr. Stephen Kirkhorn about how odors from animal feeding operations impact neighbor and community health. Dr. Kirkhorn was medical director of the National Farm Medicine Center and Occupational Health at the Marshfield Clinic in Marshfield, Wisconsin for nine years. Uh, I think it's important for uh, agricultural um, owners and operators to be aware of the impact on the community. Um, I, I really do believe that uh, by far and away the vast majority of uh, agricultural uh, owners, um, farmers, are, you know, are very conscious of the impact uh, in, in their community. And I think everybody wants to be a good neighbor. You know, certainly the farmers that I know, um, you know they, they do recognize it as, as a concern and look at ways that they can decrease the impact. Offensive odors can evoke strong emotional and physiological responses. So the goal of odor management is to keep them at non-detectable or at least non-offensive levels. Most agricultural communities tolerate some detectable odors. In these communities, when we talk about odor management, we talk in terms of managing phyto. Frequency, intensity, duration, and offensiveness. Frequency describes how often odors are detected. It makes a big difference if odors are detected twice a day, once a week, or once a month. Intensity describes how strong the odor is. Even pleasant odors that are too strong can be a problem. Duration describes how long the odor is detected. Is it a few minutes, hours, or longer? 
Offensiveness indicates how unpleasant the odor is. Together they make up Fido. With low odor frequency, intensity, duration, and offensiveness, the impact of odors on a community are minimal. It can be difficult for producers and managers to assess their operations and investigate the impact of different practices on airborne emissions. So a group of agricultural partners and universities developed an interactive tool. The National Air Quality Site Assessment Tool, NACSAT, is a free web-based tool that helps assess the impacts of different management practices on airborne emissions from animal feeding operations. NACSAT is confidential, free, and available online at http colon backslash backslash naqsat.tamu.edu. NACSAT has species-specific questions for dairy, beef, swine, and poultry operations. There are questions on animals and housing, diet, manure management, land application, mortalities, neighbor relations, and gravel road management that help producers and managers evaluate their situation and options being considered. Livestock producers and managers can adopt one or more practices to manage odors. Practices to reduce emissions include feed and diet management, additives, covers, and biofilters. Practices to enhance dispersion include windbreaks or vegetative buffers and longer separation distances. For more information about these practices, you're encouraged to go to the air quality section of the Animal Manure Management Extension website. This website provides useful science-based information about airborne emissions from livestock and poultry operations and several effective practices that help manage emissions. You'll be able to find videos, fact sheets, and archived webinars. Livestock producers and managers are aware of odor emissions and their impact on their neighbors. To get a sense of producer awareness and concern, we visited with Galen Johnson about odors from his operation and what he has done to manage them. My neighbors have been uh, friendly to Grandview Hogs and, and we have not been in, um, in, in, in a complaint situations, but the reality that there are odors that leave a swine farm are just a fact that, that it happens, so we need to be proactive. We met with the neighbors. Uh, we brought Dr. Dick Nikolai to a meeting, we had a meal for our, for our um, neighborhood, everybody within two miles of our farm, and um, we introduced to them what we desired to do and what our plans were to, to mitigate as many odors as, as the science were allowing us to do at that point. And that was our introduction to biofilters. Um, so at this point, we use uh, bacteria, our bacteria pit additives, we use tree plantings, we use biofilters, and we use injection of manure um, into the soil, all as part of our odor controls. Producers and managers thinking about adopting odor reducing practices need to consider the advantages and disadvantages of each practice, the costs, and how the practice fits into the overall management and operation of the facility, while being mindful of the concerns of neighbors and the community. There is no magic bullet. Orders from livestock and poultry operations raise legitimate concerns among neighbors and the public. Livestock producers and managers, neighbors, and community leaders need science-based information to make informed decisions decisions that balance the needs and concerns of neighbors in the community and the men and women who own and operate animal feeding operations. Checking with neighbors to avoid doing odorous tasks during special neighbor or community events can go a long ways towards managing agricultural odors. Good neighbor relations and effective communications can help identify odor problems and communicate what is being done to manage them. Well, thanks for the information. I'll look it over right away. Great. And if you want to stop by sometime, I'll show you what we're doing. That sounds great. Thanks. Say hey to Doreen. Will do. Take care, George.